Hi everybody, I'm Scott and I'm going to talk to you about backups. I know, everyone hates talking about backups because it's boring and it seems tedious. But until all your data disappears on you, you know, it's understandable that you think that. But take it from me, back your shit up. It's very important. So if you're not doing it, do it. The purpose of this video is to talk a little bit about backups and I'm also going to put together a new backup server for my house in this giant case with this old motherboard and 12 2 terabyte hard drives which are going to be in RAID 6 so this will have a total of 20 terabytes of storage. Now you might ask, Scott, why are you using 2 terabyte hard drives? There's like much bigger hard drives available on the market nowadays. Well, two reasons and this is why you might want to consider using smaller drives than what you could buy. Uh, at maximum. First of all, large drives means a higher overhead for RAID. I mean, I'm assuming you have a budget. Like, if you could just afford to buy, I don't know, 15, 10 terabyte hard drives, go nuts. You know, it's good for you. But I'm assuming you can't. And so, for example, if all you can afford is three 10 terabyte hard drives, what are you going to put that in? RAID 6, you'll have 10 terabytes of storage. You can mirror them, 10 terabytes of storage. RAID 5, you get 20 terabytes of storage. But RAID 5 is kind of sketchy, especially with huge drive sizes. Why is it sketchy with huge drive sizes? Because during array rebuild, you have to worry about unrecoverable read errors. Look that up. I'm not going to get into that. But basically, the larger the drive is, the more time it takes to rebuild, the more read operations there are because the more data there is, and the more chance that there'll be an unrecoverable read, meaning that the data cannot be recovered and cannot be transferred to the new drive and the whole operation gets fucked and your whole array is fucked. And you don't want that. So smaller drives equals lower rebuild times. Um, you can also have more of them. So, you know, assuming you don't want to do RAID 5, which you don't. RAID 6, you need two drives of just like overhead for parity. So if you have four drives, again, then you're better off with RAID 10 because it'll be faster because you ever have two drives of overhead anyway. So you really need something more than, I would say, five or six, well, six or seven drives even to make RAID 6 make sense without losing a whole bunch of capacity, relatively speaking, to your parity disks. Now, some people would say a RAID 6 with 12 drives might be pushing it because the chances of drive failures go up. I mean, the chance of any individual drive failing is the same, but the more drives you have, the more chances of a drive failure. Two terabyte drives, pretty safe. It can rebuild one of those pretty fast. I'm also using two terabyte drives because I have them. Here's what happens. I have a main file server. When that gets old and the drives are kind of getting obsolete, I take them out, I buy some new drives, put them in there, and then the old drives go to a backup server. Kind of not what happened recently because now my main server, my file server is full of three terabyte hard drives, but there's 33 of them, so it's kind of nuts. A whole different story. I just happened to get a good deal on a bunch of three terabyte drives. My old file server had four terabyte drives. That's not my current backup server. This one's going to have two. That's why it is. But it kind of makes sense. I mean, in a large RAID array, or, you know, if it's a ZFS RAID or a Linux RAID or even a hardware RAID, rebuild times become an issue. And they also get expensive, again, for overhead purposes. So the downside of running a bunch of small drives, well, there's really two main downsides. One is power consumption. These drives use a decent amount of power because they're spinning all the time. And some of these are 7,200 RPM, which is more than 5,400 for a backup server. Slower drives, uh, less power hungry drives are probably better. This is just happens to be what I have. Um, in fact, I think most of them are 7,200 RPM. So if you're worried about power, get 5,400 RPM, variable, variable RPM, or low RPM. Like, some of them are, like, off-the-clock low. You can go down to, like, I think 4,000 really shitty drives. Stay away from those because they're shitty anyway. But I digress. The other downside besides power consumption is complexity. The more drives you have, the more disk controllers you need, or the larger a disk controller you need. Uh, theoretically, if you can do software RAID, the better uh, CPU you need. More cabling, bigger power supply, bigger physical case. I mean, I know not everyone has a place to put one of these in their home or apartment or wherever you live. So that could be an issue also. Upsides and downsides to everything. You gotta weigh all that. For me, I have a big closet upstairs. I'm gonna throw this in there with the other backup server. It's fine for me. You gotta do what works for you. And uh, power consumption wise, it's gonna hurt a little having this on my power bill now, but for the safety of my data, it's worth it. 
So that being said, like backups are gonna cost you money whether you host them or someone else does. Okay, so now it's the end of the video. Um, it's really not because obviously I haven't put the thing together, but you just saw me put it together. It's weird, right? Editing. I'm just recording this before I do this because it's a tangent and I didn't want to get bogged down in it before actually showing you how to put this together, which is why I'm assuming you want to see this video. Maybe not. So you can shut off now if you don't want to hear all about backups and the types of them. But this is important if you don't know it. But you don't know what I'm going to say, so you don't know if you know it. This is hurting my... whatever. So, with backups, there are a number of modalities and ways, or I don't know what you want to do, categories of backups. There's on-site and off-site. There's online and offline. There's read-only media, and there's read-write media. And there's all, all sorts of other things. But th those are the main considerations. Now, you can have some of those, but not all of them at the same time with one backup solution which is why I have numerous backup solutions. Like for example, all my most important documents and files like photographs, uh, family stuff, picture, pictures from vacations, crap like that that I really don't want to lose, I have synced to both a backup server in my house and also a backup server in my office. So it's off-site. Point is, if my house burns down, if someone robs it, steals all my computers, I still have that data somewhere. It's at my office. Cool, right? Well, not necessarily cool because that's a backup server, it's online all the time. It's connected to my house via VPN. So theoretically, if someone were to hack my network, I know it's hackers, whatever, black hat hackers. You know, I'm not one of those guys who thinks that all hackers are evil. Just black hats, and maybe gray hats, any, some kind of hat. But anyway, there's also malware. You know, you could get some kind of nasty worm, virus, whatever the fuck that just uh, maliciously deletes files or encrypts files, you know, some kind of ransomware, and it could infect multiple hosts of my network, including my backup servers. So a, that's the disadvantage to having online backups, is that they could get corrupted by some outside force. So what's the alternative to online backups? Well, that's offline, obviously. Now, offline backups can be you taking a USB hard drive, for example, hooking it up to your computer, copying all your files to that, and then putting that in a safe. Or bring it to your office if you want it to be then off-site. So it's offline. So if someone did hack into your computer, if a malicious piece of malware got on there, your backup would be fine, unaffected. Problem is, that's a read-write backup. It's a hard drive. So let's say your computer does become infected with malware. Next time you go, and you don't notice, next time you go and plug that backup hard drive in, maybe the ransomware starts encrypting the crap on there because suddenly it sees that drive and that drive is suddenly online. Which brings me to read-only backups. That's mostly optical media. For example, Blu-rays. I mean, DVDs are so small by today's standards, they're basically useless. And even for video, Blu-rays are stretching it because even a 50 gig Blu-ray is still kind of small nowadays. It depends what you have. But a 50 gig Blu-ray should be more than enough for all your documents, your family photos, stuff like that. And it's the kind of stuff like that you really want to store that you only need to back up once. You burn it to a Blu-ray, you put that aside at your office, wherever you want to put it, preferably out of your house in case your house burns down. And then when you get more photos and you get a bunch more, you know, aggregated, maybe you burn another Blu-ray, add those to, you know, your Blu-ray archive and you move it out of your house. Again, on-site versus off-site. If you leave it in your house, it's on-site. If you take it away from your house, it's off-site. I definitely recommend having some kind of off-site backups. Now, most people nowadays, I think, back up to the cloud. And the cloud is just someone else's server or servers, which are somewhere else. You don't really care. That's the point of the cloud. Like, it's just kind of opaque to you where these servers are or what they do. Call me paranoid, but I find that concerning. I mean, I'm gonna put all my most precious data probably some private documents, private photos, stuff like that that I wouldn't want just any old Tom, Dick, and Harry to see and just upload it to someone else's server somewhere. Now, first of all, unless you're encrypting it at your end, any admin at that service, I'm not even gonna name names because it doesn't matter, any admin there could just go and peek at your files when they please. Now, giant backup service, chances of them actually looking at your files, pretty slim, but 
sometimes people do do that. Also, you got to worry about if their entire service is compromised and hackers start downloading stuff. Remember when, uh, what was it called? The Fappening, right? People's uh, Apple iCloud accounts got compromised. Bad news, right? And the thing is, those cloud services, the backup services, are good targets for hackers or just malicious people, whatever you want to call them. Another reason I don't like cloud-based backups and cloud storage is because my data is kind of held hostage there. What if they decide to up their prices for storage? I either get all my data off, which could take quite a long time depending on how much I have and how fast my internet connection is, and then I got to upload to some other place where it's cheaper. I mean, you might end up having to move your data around all the time. That's annoying, but also the provider you're using could go out of business. Now, if it's Google that you're using or Apple or, you know, Drop, well, Dropbox, maybe. Google and Apple aren't going out of business, at least not anytime soon. But they could decide to discontinue the product you're using. They've discontinued a lot of products in the past. Who's to say it couldn't happen again? And what's free today might not be free tomorrow. What's low cost today might not be low cost tomorrow, etc. Um, I'm not quite done shitting on cloud storage yet. Another thing I hate about cloud storage, at least as your primary means of backup, is that if you want to restore your files, you have to download them all from the internet, which could take a really long time, I mean, depending on how much data you have. But if you have a lot of video, for example, I mean, it could be days, weeks, even more, to recover all your data. Now, maybe you could prioritize it and just get the data you need absolutely you know, soon, right up front. But I don't know, I don't like being stuck in that situation where I need to pull data off a relatively low bandwidth connection in the case of an emergency. Now, some companies like Backblaze, for example, which I use for work to get our backups off-site because we don't have, uh, you know, the house work situation. Uh, Backblaze, you know, so far pretty good. I generally recommend them. They support end-to-end -end encryption. And also, if you need all your data, they will put it on hard drives and FedEx them to you or UPS, or whatever the hell they use. Point is, you can get a large amount of data quickly, but quickly is still relative, because you're still talking about like the processing time that time takes to get to you. You know, it's overnight, you're talking about like, two business days at least. It might not be fast enough for you. It depends on your requirements. If it's really mission critical data, if you're a small business, like a photographer, and you have a bunch of weddings in progress, I mean, if your data is all backed up on the cloud and your main drives crash, you could be very screwed if you need to get someone's wedding video in, that's in 4K, you know, 60 FPS or some shit like that off the cloud really fast. I mean, if you have deadlines, that could be a problem. So that's why it's good to have local backups. Because, for example, my backup server is going to sit here in my house. I have a gigabit connection going to it. In fact, I could just start using it like a file server if my main file server just implodes. Because all the data will be on there and it's networked. So that's a much better situation. Even my off-site backups at my office, I can just drive to my office, take the hard drive out of the computer, bring it to my house, copy it that way, very quick. Now, I'm not trying to tell you you shouldn't use cloud backups. It's a, much better than doing nothing, first of all. And it's really not as bad as I'm making it sound. Those are just concerns I have, and I happen to have enough extra computer crap and, I don't know, know-how and whatever to do my own like sort of fairly robust backup solution. Um, I should add that I also do back up my most critical stuff to Blu-ray. And in fact, I bring those to someone else's house in a completely different state periodically, like maybe twice a year, sometimes only once a year. That's just ridiculous paranoia on my end, but that's like in case work gets completely compromised or fucked up on the same day my house does or New York gets nuked while I'm on vacation. Well, let's hope that doesn't happen, because I'd have far bigger problems to worry about, but at least I'd have all my old documents from 1996. Like I said, that's just stupid paranoia, but i do it anyway, because why the hell not? That's like last-ditch emergency sort of shit. So the backup solution you choose should be a hybrid of things. That's kind of my point. If you're backing up to the cloud, fine. Keep doing that. But your most important stuff, your most critical stuff that you absolutely would just, I don't know, cry or shoot yourself or, uh, I don't know, just be depressed for weeks if you lost it, that stuff burned to Blu-ray. And if you don't have a Blu-ray burner, you probably have a DVD burner in some computer somewhere. At least your documents, your most precious things, pick some photographs that you wouldn't want to lose, your wedding photographs, whatever. Burn those to media. 
put it somewhere else, not in your house. Oh, and I should also mention flash drives. A lot of people I know use those for backups because you can get them in fairly large sizes nowadays, 256 gig, I don't know, 512 gig maybe. The point is that's enough for most people's basic backup needs, more than enough maybe. The thing is I wouldn't trust a flash drive in an emergency. They're cheap kind of for a reason. Uh, again, it might just be a touch of paranoia, but you know, especially if you're gonna take the flash drive, back a bunch of stuff up to it, then leave it in a closet for six months. You don't know for sure it's gonna work when you plug it back in. Again, a good reason to have multiple backups. And that could be another concern with cloud providers. Again, you don't know what they're doing with your data and how they're storing it. They're probably doing a good job of it, but how do you know? And how do you know your data is still physically there? Like, what happens with a lot of them is, they store your data on a bunch of servers piecemeal, but so that it's uh, robust, they usually have some kind of, you know, RAID-like redundancy to the data. Fine. But they also have the data indexed on some indexing server, you know, database, basically. That's how most of them work. So, problem could be twofold. The index could be fine, but your data could be lost, and you wouldn't know it. You could log into their portal or whatever, you know, browse through your own files, see that they're all there. You say, great, awesome, all my files are there. One day you go to restore them, maybe they're not there. Maybe just some of them aren't there. The fact is, it's not your storage, it's not your system. You don't know what they're doing with the data and what they might have lost by accident. Here's the thing, like Google and Apple, let's say Dropbox, like they're really good at what they do. It, you know, they're very good at storing data, managing data, indexing data, all that stuff. But with millions of customers, shit's bound to go wrong with some of them. Like there's no way they're 100% good with that stuff. Like there's no way 100% of their data survives for five years. If they claim that it does, I wouldn't believe them. I'd hate to be one of the unlucky ones where my data's disappeared, I don't know it, then my hard drive crashes on my laptop and I go to recover my data and it's not on the service that I use. Just disappeared. Again, optical media, it lasts a decent long time. Um, you can buy archival grade Blu-ray and DVDs, stuff like that, which are supposed to last, I don't know, 40, 50 years. Very expensive. I have CDs and DVDs CDs that are probably 20 years old, DVDs that are 10, maybe 15 years old, from when DVD and CD burners first came out. Just for fun, I tested a couple of them recently. They still work, and they were cheap CDs and DVDs when, when I got them. If you want to be paranoid, burn everything twice to two different pieces of media. Most likely it'll last. And you can always check your own media. At least then you know for a fact your files are there. And it's the same with the backup server. I mean. I have it sync, I use rsync, it's nothing fancy, to pull the data from my file server and a few other servers that I have uh, to the backup server. Now rsync makes sure that it's synchronized, that every file exists in both places, which is pretty reliable. I mean, yeah, there could be corruption on my backup server that I'm not aware of, and when I go to restore it, I could have a problem. Could happen to anyone, sure. That's why I back up all my most important stuff multiple times. But anyway, at least I know where my files are, and I know how they're stored, and I can go look at them when I want to, which I don't do very often. Couldn't hurt to do it now and then. I'm, you know, it's one of those, uh, you know, the cobblers without shoes. What's the expression? Anyway, I'm not that good about following my own advice, but I'm still giving it to you anyway, because even if you follow some of it, it'll help you out in the long run. Like I said, kind of boring to talk about backups, but, um, and this, this was by no means exhaustive. So look into it, read up on it. Like one day when you just have nothing better to do, research it because you really should know all there is to know about backups and keeping your data safe. That is, unless you don't care about your data, then fuck it, just keep it on your laptop. And that, make that the only copy. So if the laptop hard drive fails, you're screwed. Laptop gets stolen, you're screwed. You spill coffee in the laptop, you might be screwed. A million other things could happen. That's why you shouldn't keep your data in one place. One place is terrible, two places is good, three places is great, four places is a little ridiculous, but I do it anyway. Oh, and now this is probably just my super paranoia, but I also don't run the same operating system on my backup server as I do on my file server. It seems weird, right? 
that's in case I get some kind of malware infection that infects one server or the other, it can't transit the network or otherwise get transferred from one to the other and necessarily run. Not all malware is like OS dependent, but a lot are, a lot is, whatever. So it certainly couldn't hurt. Like if you're running a Windows file server, run a Linux backup server. If you're running a free BSD file server, Linux backup server, even use a Windows backup server. I mean, the vector for most malware is you using the computer. That's another thing. If you're gonna set up a computer as a backup server, at some point, unless you're like a crazy person like me with, you know, I don't even know how many computers in this house, you're probably at some point gonna say, ah, I need an extra computer for such and such a purpose. Um, I'll use my backup server. Like maybe you want to um, store your uh, cryptocurrency blockchains on the backup server and have the backup server actually sync with the Bitcoin network, for example, because that's where your storage is. So great, you have some extra storage there. Bad idea. Never run anything on your backup server other than rsync or whatever kind of software you're using to do the backups. Also, firewall your backup server. In other words, don't allow any traffic in almost at all. I have one rule on my backup server to allow traffic, and that's to allow SSH in from a particular host in my network. That's not to say I can't log on locally if something on my network gets fucked up, so whatever. The point is the backup server pulls data, because my file server is already exposed. It's already accessible from within my network, otherwise what's the point of having one? If the backup server was exposed so the file server could push backups to it, well then that's a vector for either a malware or a hacker. So allow no traffic into your backup server. That's my advice. Especially, do not like put a DNAT rule in your firewall or a port forwarding rule, as your terminology may be, going to your backup server from outside. Woo, don't do that. You do not want to expose it in any way. In fact, don't even let it respond to pings or any ICMP traffic. Like, just let it be a dead host, except maybe port 22. If you want to have a local console on it and that's it, I mean, technically even better. It makes it administration a bitch. That's why I leave SSH open. But yeah, harden your backup server. That's all I'm saying. Also, if you have data that you don't want other people to get their hands on, I don't know, like some kind of top secret documents, um, especially business stuff, I don't know, bank account information, stuff like that, Encrypt it. Encrypt it on your file server and your backup server. Uh, methods of encrypting are numerous, and I won't get into all of them. I have all of my important stuff sort of segmented and stored on encrypted storage. A lot of it's online encrypted storage, which means that it's actually accessible all the time to anyone who has, gets access to my file server, for example, or gets access to my backup server. It's more just in case someone steals it, like physically takes it. When they power it on, they won't be able to Un to unencrypt, to decrypt the data. They won't know the encryption keys. No the passphrases for the encryption keys. And believe me, there's plenty of paranoid-ass ways to encrypt your data. Not just uh, encryption schemes, but just sort of methodologies in, in encompassing the encryption. But again, you gotta pick the right backup solution for you. That's the point I'm trying to make. Like, don't necessarily do what I'm doing. Do what A, feels right for you, and B, what works right for you. The more important your data, the more you should be protecting it. That's basically what it comes down to. Then uh, I don't have a way to measure how important your data is, but just imagine all of your data was to disappear tomorrow. And then kind of go off that, how you feel. What else, what else? I think this is going on long enough anyway, but... Oh, I'll keep talking though, because uh, it also helps if you, in your mind, sort of categorize your data. Like, for example, you might want to separate into three tiers, like super important, somewhat important, not important. So obviously the super important stuff you probably want to back up in two or three different ways. The just important stuff, you know, maybe back up in two ways. And so in the not important stuff, maybe don't back up at all if you really don't care if you lose it or just back it up once in a sloppy way. I don't know. Again, up to you. But that's, but that's the rule I follow. The more important the data, the more elaborately I back it up. The less important the data, I don't have anything I don't back up at all, but um, like movies, TV shows, music, 
it's not like those couldn't be reobtained or re-ripped off like DVDs and Blu-rays and stuff that I have or be downloaded off Amazon for like a lot of my MP3s. The problem is to get it all back in a collection, all neat and tidy on my server would take a shit ton of effort, even though all the content's available and none of it's proprietary content. It would just be such a hassle to reobtain it all that I back it up, even though it's probably about, uh, I don't know, 12, 15 terabytes. So it's expensive and, and you know, time consuming to get it all set up to back that up. But, you know, to me it's worth it. To you it might not be. So I'm saying. I mean, again, something like this might not be right for you. You know, you probably don't have terabytes of data to back up. I do. My main file server is, I think, 90 terabytes-ish. That's 9-0 of usable storage. And I have 46 and a half-ish terabytes of that storage is used. So that's like a lot. Uh, like I said, my main backup server right now is 40 terabytes of usable storage. So adding an extra 20 terabytes of storage is gonna be enough for now. Not enough for too much longer, but I'll deal with that when it comes. So, my recommendation for you if, let's say, you just have a couple of terabytes of data, just get two hard drives, you know, larger than the amount of data you have, so you have room to expand into it as you get more data. But let's say you have, like, two terabytes of data you want to back up. Get two four-terabyte hard drives, put them in a RAID 1 configuration, stick them in a small, neat little chassis. You know, even if you just get an old computer, like an old Dell that someone, a family member has lying around, put two hard drives in that, connect it to your network, Put Linux on it, set up some very simple backup scripts to just r-sync your data over to it. And that's more than enough. Like, you don't need to go this crazy. So anyway, I know that was long. Um, I hope you found this helpful in some way. I didn't intend it to be a really in-depth discussion about how to back things up and all the various means and methodologies in detail, because that would be like a six-hour video. I just wanted to give you an idea of what you could be doing or should be doing there's tons of information about all this stuff online for setting up your own server, um, for backing up to optical media, just the best practices, stuff like that. Like I said, this is just for inspiration. This is to show you, you know, what's possible with some relatively obsolete hardware to get a reasonable amount of storage that's somewhat performant and won't break the bank, except the electric bill. But I deal with that on a monthly basis. Uh, I don't know, if you have any questions or comments, uh, leave them in well, the comments section, that would be fucking logical. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at this, is that in the, yeah, that's in the right place. You can find me on, I don't know, just look that up. Just Google that and you'll find me. Can't promise I'll respond right away, sometimes I just don't give a shit. I get depressed, you know. But anyway, at least I have a lot of computers to keep me warm and happy. Goodbye.